In this video, we're going to learn about extruding and insetting faces. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on learning Blender. But now we want to get into some of the tools such as extruding faces and insetting those faces. So these are going to be helpful as we begin to create our geometry. And once again, we're going to start with the default cube. I'm going to hide the light and the camera as I don't really need to see them right now. So right now we have our default cube. And I want to begin to start to learn shortcut keys. I'm still going to go through all the menus, but I'm going to start calling out shortcut keys as we begin to explore them because I think it's important at this stage, now if we've started to learn the basics of selecting edges and adding geometry, that we start to apply those shortcut keys at this point. So the first shortcut key to get into and out of object mode and edit mode is the tab key. This is gonna be very quick, much quicker than going up and actually selecting object mode or edit mode. You'll notice if you hover over this, it doesn't show that tab is a shortcut key here. And if you hover over the menu, it doesn't either, but that's one of the first ones. And keep in mind that you have to have your object selected. And you can see here, because I only have one object, it automatically chooses this for me. But in most cases, if you have more than one, you wanna make sure that you have it selected, then hit tab. Then we need to decide if we're working on vertices, edges, or faces. For this example, we're gonna be using the face selection. I'm gonna left click to deselect all. Let's zoom in a little bit. And let's notice that on the left hand side, we have extrude region and there's a small arrow which allows us to hold down the left mouse button. You can see that we have extrude region, extrude manifold, we have extrude along normals, we have extrude individual, and we have extrude cursor. We're gonna take a look at three of these. We're gonna look at extrude region, extrude along normals, and extrude individual. So first, let's take a look at extrude region. So you can see here that it says it extrudes freely or along an axis. So for this tool, I'm gonna to select a face and notice on screen that we have this plus icon. If we begin to pull up, you can see that what we're doing is we're extruding that face. If we take this white circle here or this white icon, you can see that we're moving this freely around. If I hit Z on the keyboard, it'll lock it into the Z orientation. If I select another face, for example, this middle one here, I can just pull it out. But again, if I grab this, you can see that it's extruding again. But now we want to hit X to make sure that we're moving along the X direction. So this is the basic use of extrude region. Let's take a look at the next one, which is extrude along normals. When we use extrude along normals, I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna select two different faces that are opposing each other. You can see in this case, they're 90 degrees. If I pull this out, you'll notice that it's extruding along normals, but it's extruding along normals in a sense that these two are still connected. Next, I wanna select these two faces over here, but this time I'm gonna go down to extrude individual. When I pull this out, notice that they're moving in their normal direction, but the faces are coming out individually. So there are many instances where all of these different tools will come in handy, depending on the geometry that you're creating. For example, if I select three faces down here and I extrude individually, you can see that it's pulling them out in each direction. If I repeat that process over here, and again, I'm holding down the shift key to select multiples, and I change this to extrude along normals, what we end up getting is three that are selected or connected to each other. You can see that we can move these in or out, either way is gonna be fine, but it's a quick way for us to create geometry. When this is still selected, if we begin pulling it again, we're gonna create another extrude. So if you wanna to change to translate or scale, you need to make sure that you do change to that tool. And this is another time for us to explore some more shortcut keys. The three main modes that we're gonna be manipulating geometry are to move them, to rotate them, or to scale them. Now we've been selecting these tools to make sure that we understand where they're located, but there are also shortcut keys for these. To move is G on the keyboard. The letter G can allow us to move in any direction. 
So for example, if we hit G now, it's going to move these in any direction. But then we can pick a direction such as Z to only move in the Z direction. I'm going to hit Escape to cancel that. If we hit S, this is going to allow us to scale. Now, scale is going to be going out in all directions, but what if we wanted to scale in plane? Well, to do this in plane, we need to hold down Shift and then select the axis that we want to exclude. In this case, if I say Shift and X, I would exclude X and only be scaling in Y and Z. So the other option is Rotate, which is R on the keyboard. And once again, if we pick an axis, for example, X, we'll be rotating about X. So these three are going to be the quick way for us to get access to moving, to rotating, and to scaling. There's another trick with this, and I'm going to do this in vertex mode. I'm going to select this upper vertice, and if I hit G on the keyboard, I can move the vertex in any direction. If I hit X, I can move it in X. If I hit Y, I can move it in Y. And if I hit Z, I can move it in Z. But a way that we can do this is by hitting G on the keyboard twice. And what G on the keyboard twice allows us to do is actually move the vertice, edge, or face along the edges that already exist. So if we're trying to adjust a design, for example, if I'm trying to take these two vertices and I hit G twice, I can move them down along the edges that we already have on our design. So this is something similar to Fusion 360 where we have slide edge. However, when we're doing this in Blender, if I hit G twice, it allows us to slide the edge along other edges. And this also works with vertices. So keeping in mind that in Fusion 360, we can't make this happen with vertices, it's very handy for us to be able to do that in Blender. But note that we cannot extend this along a, a position or a situation where we don't actually have an edge anymore. So we pulled this down along an edge, but now we can't go back up. So if we want to go back up, we hit G one time, and then we hit Z to move up in the Z direction. You can see that we're able to move that up and down just simply locking into the Z direction. So these are a couple different ways that we can create new geometry and we can modify it. But let's take a look at the inset face, which we haven't looked at yet. So this inset face also has a shortcut key, which is I on the keyboard. So if we hit I, we'll be able to inset the face. And let's go ahead and select this other face and we'll use it with the tool here. We set inset face and we use the on-screen manipulator and we begin dragging it and you can see that we've setting that face in. With those selected, I'm going to go back to my selection dialog box and I hit G on the keyboard. And again, we can move these. Again, picking Z, I'm going to hit S to scale it and scale it down. And then I'm going to hit R and Y to rotate it about the Y axis and then G and X to move. It. So you can see that you need to get comfortable with moving these things around. A lot of times you might want to have more than one viewport, so you can have a front view, a side view, and a top view. But oftentimes working in this sort of isometric view and making sure that you are able to use the X, Y, and Z coordinate systems can really speed up the modeling process. Down here, what I want to do is I'm going to select these three faces and I want to scale them. And notice that we have X, Y, and Z in the upper right hand corner. I want to scale them so that they come out positively, which means I do not want to go in the X direction, only in the Y and Z. So I'm going to hit S on the keyboard, and I'm going to hold Shift and X, which will lock it into Y and Z. Notice that it is scaling and overlapping other geometry, so I'm going to hit G on the keyboard and Z to move this down. You can see that we've created a situation where now we have a ton of bad geometry. And this is very easy to do, simply based on how quickly things move with the cursor, depending on where your mouse is. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo and undo. And then I'm going to try again, S to scale and Shift X. And then I want to make sure that I'm very carefully moving out. And then again, G and Z and move this down. And now you can see this looks a whole lot better. So you have to be very careful, especially when you're moving the cursor around really close to the center point of your selection, because you can quickly get in a situation where you flip flop or you overlap those faces. Remember that there is a lot of different ways that we can sort of create and manipulate geometry. And right now we're not looking at creating anything specific, but we just want to continue to explore the tools. 
We want to make sure that we know where move, rotate, and scale are, but we also want to start to get comfortable with making sure that we can use things like S on the keyboard to scale, G to move, or R to rotate. We also want to note that we have things like extrude and inset face, which also have other options such as E on the keyboard to extrude or I on the keyboard to inset face. And again, G will allow us to translate, S to scale, and R to rotate. While this doesn't really look like anything we were trying to make, let's apply a subdivision surface modifier and just see what it looks like when it's smoothed out a little bit. I'm going to add a few. And you can see this looks like some sort of very melted duck or organic shape. So very quickly, we were able to make something. And whether or not we use it or that was the intention, it's good practice just to play around with these tools. And when you create something that you don't really want to use, just go back to new create a new document, and start over again. Playing around with these tools constantly and getting comfortable with the shortcut keys is going to be the key to be able to progress in the modeling process. Whether or not you want to design products and bring them back into Fusion, or if you want to design game assets or things for rendering or animations, it really doesn't matter at this stage as long as you start to build out your foundational knowledge of, of how to select the different objects, how to begin to manipulate them, and there are tons of tools, we probably are not going to get to even half of them, but there are tons of tools, tons of different things that we can do. So just getting comfortable with what we know at this stage is going to be important. In the next video, we're going to have a challenge. And by challenge, I mean we're going to just turn this box into something. Uh, as a quick preview, I'm going to show you that we're going to quickly and very easily turn this into a UFO. And we're going to do that by just using a handful of tools and applying a subdivision surface modifier. We're going to increase the subdivision surface, and we are going to create a UFO shape. So very quickly and easily, we'll add a little bit more detail in the challenge. But what we're going to do from here is we're going to continue to explore the tools. I'm going to point them out, and then we're going to start to get comfortable with using those shortcut keys. Because really, the only way to go forward with learning the modeling process in Blender is going to be those shortcut keys. What I'm going to do in the description of this video is I'm going to add a handful of shortcut keys that we're going to be using in the next one. So that way you can continue to play around with them, um, maybe explore what shapes you can create and figure out how to get comfortable in your modeling process. But if you have any questions at this stage, please let me know. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.